Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Q&A show on Inside the Birds platform. Our Philadelphia cardiac kids strike <laughs> again with a big-time overtime victory against the Buffalo Bills and a Josh Allen that was slinging a ball in the rain like it wasn't even there. And to our own Jalen Hurts, who has a clutch gene, who looking like MJ in the fourth <laughs> quarter, baby. I'm one of your co-hosts, Jason Avant. I'm with my man, Quinn Michael. Say what's up to the people. What's up, everybody? Glad to be back. Oh, what a time to be alive, man. What a time to be alive. I know that's right. Before <laughs> we get before we get into the show, yes, we're 10 and 1. Want to say thank you to Adam and Jeff and Josh and Greg and everyone that's responsible, Jason, everyone that's responsible for bringing this show to you guys. You can email your questions to us if you want them answered at um, inside the birds at gmail.com. Again, inside the birds at gmail.com. Also, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Check us out inside the birds YouTube channel, the Q and A podcast. Thank you guys for all of your support. Let's get this show on the road. Q, tell me, have you seen a more resilient Eagles team in the history of the Eagles? Have you seen a more <laughs> resilient? team is this team unshakable or are they just lucky i mean obviously a little bit of luck plays into it but the bigger the bigger issue for me the bigger thing the bigger story is that this team is just very very resilient um you know uh, in his uh press conference or not press conference but it, talking to the media after the game a uh, mm -hmm. great quote by hassan reddick he said you know basically we we find a way we keep going and uh you know, that that right there epitomizes this team. No matter what goes well, no matter what goes wrong, if you still have a, another quarter, another play, they're just going to keep going. And so that shows that this – and it's just across the board. I mean, I saw the, the one play on the final drive. You got 350-pound Jordan Davis chasing down um, chasing down um, Josh, Josh, Josh Allen on the, on the sideline. I mean, that's a perfect example of this team. They just don't give up. They just keep going. And – um, yeah, I mean, it was, it's, it's a phenomenal win for this team. Very resilient. Very resilient. And that Jordan Davis played. Big fella was he on was the sideline for two minutes after that play. I thought we were going to need an inhaler or some oxygen on the Bill sideline. Yeah. Trainer, can we borrow some oxygen? Hey. Wasn't hurt or nothing. He, he acted like he was hurt, but that boy was just tired. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, All right, yeah. man. So very yeah, resilient. Here, this is why I say they're resilient, right? Which makes them a special team. Can they play better? Is there a call that goes their way every now and again? Is there a situation, a mistake that the other team makes that goes, yeah, but you got to capitalize on that. So that's number one. But very few times are you going to lose the turnover battle in the game and win. Very few times are you going to lose the third down battle in the game and still win. You're going to lose the time of possession by 13 minutes and still win. You're going to lose the yards battle, total yards battle by 123 yards and still win, right? You're out with Lane Johnson's out of the game. Fletcher Cox goes out of the game. Cunningham goes out of the hand, goes out of the game. You're leading tackler. We're already down Goddard, Vontae Maddox. This team just figures out a way to win ball games you saw the bills kicker put a ball on the the middle of the the upright and then the the middle of splitting the uprights and then it goes over to the right jake elliott sees it okay i'm gonna put the ball on a left upright and then it'll slide all the way over but it's gonna make it right make an adjustment their kicker missed from 40 ours make it from 60 right there is a resiliency about this team but they, they just believe that they can come back. And it's a special thing to see. Yeah, can we play better? Of course we can. Will there be people that say, oh, man, you guys are going to lose in the first round if you keep playing like this? Hey, they're winning ugly, but they are winning. 
That's it. <laughs> and that's the that's that's the bottom line. Can we improve and play better? Yeah, I believe that we can improve and play better. And Q, we're going to talk about this a little bit later, but I just think we need an adjustment on the way we play zone defense. We're playing too much drop, zone drop coverage. Zone drop coverage in the NFL is like shooting fish in a barrel. And that's my problem with the with the with with the secondary. And we're gonna to get to that a little bit later. Yeah, I agree. I yeah. agree. Um, yeah, so you know, I we'll yeah, we'll get into all that. Um Yeah, this first see. one. Yeah, this first one. Um comeback win, right? This mm-hmm. comeback win. Q describe Buffalo's intent on defense for the final play. Jalen Hurts, 12-yard rushing touchdown. Appears they switch from two deep zone to a zero at the snap. And and, uh, what what did you see in that play? Well, yeah, so, um, you know, going back and watching on all 22, um, it looked very similar to a blitz, that a a zero blitz that we used to run quite often. It's called, uh, we, we used to call it Red Cat. And it's a simple zero blitz. And you're sending two rushers off the edge, and the line basically pinches. It's a it's a good it's a good pressure versus teams that like the run we used to run at all time when Michael Vick was with the with the Falcons. Um, so I think that's what happened. So they look like a two shell, but what was beautiful about that play was they were trying to show the two shell, and, and Jalen quick snapped it before they got a chance to get in position. So once once they send Swift in motion. You could see the whole secondary kind of in a panic mode, like, oh, shoot, we got to go, we got to go. And they tried to rotate over and then bring themselves down. So what actually happened was when when Swift went in motion, about three defenders started to move that way. And one one of the, uh, the, the, the last overhang defender ended up in the middle of the field. By that time, the damage was done because they quick snapped them. They got them, you know, kind of out of their lanes. Jalen takes the ball, and by that point, um, by Kelsey that point, Kelsey was down. able to to wrap around and seal that seal that inside that inside defender, and it was a wrap. So it was a great call. It was it was uh, it was a great call. Great timing on on the play. Great timing on the snap, and it just they just caught this 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 uh, Bills team in in a uh, bad situation. And you know, going back to that, that this is a situation everybody in the stadium knows you're going to be. Sitting in the house, everybody in the stadium knows you're going to be in a zero blitz. In that situation, I would have, if I'm the defensive coordinator, if I'm Sean McDermott, I'm telling my guys, I don't care if they see it. Get your butt down there. Get get ready. Get ready to go because this is exactly what can happen if you get caught in a zero blitz with a, a quick snap. So you know, thank God it happened for for the birds and they got the walk off touchdown. Man, it was beautiful. Yeah, the the for zero blitz, you want immediate pressure, right? So, and that's yeah. the purpose of calling the zero blitz, is so you can get immediate pressure. That means that they're going to have most of the time, if not an extra defender that's a free runner. You're always in a zero blitz. You're always going to have a, a basically a free runner unless there's max protection, right? But there's going to be a free runner, possibly two. Right. So you're going to get, you know, guys that are running free at the quarterback. And if they can quick snap you before those guys get in position, you win. You're in great position. Right. And Jason Kelsey going in and kicking out that 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 guy, um, Dotson, the, the nickel corner in that situation. And then everybody else was out of position. Jordan Poyer was running for his life because he wasn't in position. Same way with Micah Hyde. They're running because they were in, in position. So. A great call by Brian Johnson, and I want you guys to think that think about this. There was multiple plays by Brian Johnson that he called, um, but just think about this play. There was the same type of a blitz in the Kansas City game on Jalen Hurts' touchdown, his draw touchdown in that game. So they're realizing that this play is a great call versus pressure, and they're getting to it when they need to. There's a few other schemes to, for, for zero blitz, but there's not many ways that you can effectively blitz Jalen when he is a running threat like he showed yesterday. He had the 65 yards rushing, but he ran the ball at a higher percentage than most times that, that he's played this year. So with that being said, you can't call your basic man-to-man coverages anymore because he's getting out of there on you. So you have to call a zero pressure in order to try to keep him contained and put enough bodies in front. And he just caught it at the right. 
right time. Caught the caught the bliss at the right time, like you said. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. and yep. just just seeing the growth too, just the growth of Jalen. Um, you know, very similar defense to to the Chiefs defense, and you you kind of hit on it with the pressures. They 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 brought a lot of the same type of nickel pressures from Jalen's right side. And last week he was having a little bit of trouble trouble seeing it and getting uncomfortable. Well, I saw the adjustment this game. He's getting the ball out faster and he's hitting to the weak side, right? So that that backside in that's dropping out to be in coverage, that's a mismatch all day, right? And he's mm -hmm. just taking taking what the defense gives you. So I'm I'm loving what I'm seeing from Jalen. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. So let's talk about let's talk about Jake Elliott's 59 yarder, man. Um just, do you think do you think he's starting to rival Justin Tucker as one of the best most clutch kickers in the game? I think that I, Justin Tucker has been doing it for so long and it's yeah. and it's very very tough to say there's a rival. I think that Justin Tucker is going to go down as maybe the best kicker that probably ever played, right? So, but that doesn't mean that Jake Elliott is a, isn't a pro bowl and great kicker. He just has more years in order to get to Justin Tucker's level. But is he playing that way? Yeah, he's he's kicking the ball at a high level, hadn't missed a kick in the postseason. And in these clutch situations like this, talking about 61 yarders, 59 yarder yesterday, and rain and wind and just bad field conditions, drilled it. And, uh, you know, it's just – it's. You saw Jalen Hurts' face when it came to that, and also Kelsey, they just shook their head like, this dude is unreal. And he's a great athlete, and that's what people don't realize. Like, J Jake Elliott is usually the best at every team-building game that the Eagles do. He's usually really? the best at bowling. He's the best at golfing. He's the best at basketball. Like, he's a really good athlete, and he shows up in these situations. He's not just a kicker. He's a good athlete. And, um, and I think that maybe – has something to do with him being an enhanced kicker, like being better than most. But um, he's a good person, and uh, I'm glad it's happening for him. And uh, the team definitely believes in him. And uh, like Devontae Smith said, I can watch it the whole time because I knew it was cash. I knew it was money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I knew it. Like, I knew when they iced him, you know, he he, he was expecting it. Like, he, he saw the, the, the ref call the timeout, blow the whistle, and just jogged off like it was nothing. So as soon as I saw him do that, I was like, okay, we got this. We got yeah. this. <laughs> and that's a huge kick. That was a lot of big plays in that game. Absolutely. That was a huge kick. Um. Did the Bills make a mistake by kneeling out the final 20 seconds after Jay, uh, after Jake Elliott's field goal instead of trying to get into field goal range? Yeah, um, I I was actually pretty surprised by that because you know I've 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 um, had conversations in the past when I was a player on the Sean and um, you know he's always been an aggressive guy and the only thing I can think of is you know possibly. Uh, he, you know, he's worried because, you know, sometimes Josh Allen tends to make bonehead plays at times, right? He tends mm -hmm. to take chances when he shouldn't take chances. And so I was a little bit surprised that that Sean elected to go into overtime. And I think that really was was probably the difference in the game. I mean, they had a timeout left. I, I think, did they have, I think they had one left or they might have burnt it. Yeah, they, they um, had timeout. Yeah, they had timeout, yeah, left. You know, you got a quarterback with a big arm. You got Gabe Davis. You got... Digs, you got some playmakers, you know, take a take a chance. And and to me, if I'm in that situation, I'm probably gonna stay aggressive and 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 at least try, you know, one or two plays, take a shot and see what we can get. Um uh, you're you're nuts right now, Q, and I love you. <laughs> but there's no way with 20 seconds left in the game and timeouts, and I got the ball on my 25 yard line, 30 yard line, wherever it was at the end of the game. And you think I'm about to go out and try to play hero ball and get a turnover and get a game winning field goal from 45 when a dude just kicked it from 60. There's no way that I'm going out there being aggressive. I'm going to kneel the ball just like they did. And I think that's the right play. Another thing too, Josh Allen is one of the league leaders every year when it comes 
the interceptions and turnovers, right? So he turned the ball over later in that game, has 12 interceptions, 13 interceptions down because of James Bradbury. And with that being said, I'm not putting the ball in his hands knowing that he has a proclivity to go out there and try to make a play. So I think that's one of those things that – that um, 20 seconds. Now, if it was a minute, that's totally different. 20 mm-hmm. seconds, the only thing that you're asking him to do is is to go and make some heroic play. Mm-hmm. With a minute, you don't have to be heroic. You can run your normal offense. But 20 seconds, he's going to make an ill advised throw, not knowing the situation. And that before you know it, Darius Slate is kneeling the ball at the 35 – and we're kicking the game with a field goal. That's yeah. So so I always I get flashbacks, man. I huh? get flashbacks. I get flashbacks of that play when uh when Diggs was with, with Minnesota. I think it was against the Saints, right? And he they ran that corner route. He he caught the ball on the corner route and ran for a touchdown. So I was yeah. like, that's that's my thinking. Like I'm putting pressure on the defense because I know how hard it is. Well, they were they were down though. They they had no other choice. They, it wasn't a tie game. They were down. They were dead in the water. The the Minneapolis Miracle, they were yeah, down. They were dead true. in the water. So they had to go. It wasn't a tie game. You know what I mean? So, Good point. so, so, so yeah. Yeah, can you catch the defense slipping? But more like more times than not, the defense going to catch you slipping because you're trying to make chunk plays. You're not playing in the structure of your offense. Fair enough. Yeah, so that's why I am with All that. Right. So if he had, I wish you would have. That would have been idiotic. <laughs> Yeah. All right, where were we at? Yeah, from from uh from a defensive perspective, Q, the Gabe Davis, Josh Allen miscommunication on the corner route. Whose fault do you think that was from a defense perspective? I'm gonna give you my opinion from an offensive perspective. That was <clears throat> that was all slay. Um from from a defense. So it's it, it's mind boggling. Um, you know what play I'm talking about at the end of the game yeah. when Aaron Zero. Yeah. Go ahead. It, it's mind boggling that, I mean, if you you watch this game, you watch the uh, Redskins game, you watch the Chiefs game last 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 week, every single time an offense, opposing offense needs a play, especially in the red zone, they get into these bunch sets. And I feel like we, we talk about it all week. So for me, the, the play was – almost lost at the snap we had two corners it was slay so it was gabe davis and um and Diggs lined up right next to each other in a tight split and you got slay and you have bradbury off at about eight yards standing right next to each right other. right next to each other and it's it's the same thing you know every week and you know i'm not in their meetings and i don't i don't really but i know as a as a defender anytime receivers get tight like that you're gonna have an you're gonna have an opportunity for pick routes. It's pick routes, pick routes every every week, right? So all really. they did was simple two to the flat, and then it was it was supposed to be smash, and then you know Gay is supposed to convert that once you see zero, and you can go over that too. Mm-hmm. But to me, I think defensively we just were not aligned correctly. We should have one guy in press and one guy off, and then there's no I thought this, I thought that type of situation. And so basically, what happened was. Um, Slay starts to drive the out route with Diggs, and then he realizes at the last second, oh, crap, we we're supposed to exchange this. We we're supposed to banjo this. And by that point, the damage was done because he was already – Gabe had already ate up his cushion and got mm-hmm. basically even with them and then took off. We just kind of got – you know, we just got lucky in that situation. That was a lucky Gabe, play for us. Yeah, Gabe made the wrong the wrong decision on that because he really – go ahead, you can, you can break down what he's supposed to do that on an offensive standpoint. Well, here's the thing. I don't think that Gabe Davis made the wrong decision. A corner route is a corner route. A corner route doesn't have adjustments. There's certain routes that have adjustments. A corner route is usually the only adjustment that has that the corner route has is if you're going to take it high or low. And when I say high, it's high to the back pilot, back corner or the front pylon. Like just think about it from that. Like, so that's it. Your corner angle is going to stay your corner angle. It's either high. If the guy's underneath, you go higher. If a guy's over the top, you flatten it off like an out. That's the only variation that has, that the corner happens. Josh Allen threw that ball like he was throwing a go ball. And therefore, he was in the wrong for that. Now, I see what Josh Allen is saying. It's like, yo, dude, you're uncovered. So just look back. 
But Josh Allen has to know that the receiver is not going to be intuitive in that situation and just look back right there. And even if he does look back, look back over the shoulder that the quarterback should be throwing a ball to. So therefore, you got to stick with the play call in that in that situation. How many times have we talked about, hey, remember Jalen Hurts threw that pick a couple of games ago when A.J. Brown adjusted his route and uh and he ended up that was that was against the that was against the Chiefs, wasn't it? That was Ladarius Sneed. Oh yeah. On Lager yeah. Sneed. That was Lagerius Sneed. AJ yeah. Brown um had uh had a had an in breaking like a a, a a a slant route, basically like a, a short a short a short post. Mm-hmm. And he ended up running the goal because he beat him off the line of scrimmage. When it's a blitz like that, when it's zero blitz, the quarterback don't have time to make adjustments. So you can't anticipate the receiver to see what you see. You have to stick with what's been called. So I believe that's Josh Allen 100% because it's zero blitz. You can't expect the, the, the receiver just to know that. Unless it's a slot receiver. Gabe Davis is not a slot receiver. Yeah, he's number one up. Okay. Yeah, he's in number one, and it's a corner out. Now, me, I always look. I learned that over the years that I always look. If I feel like I'm uncovered, even though I'm going to hit the corner, I'm still going to peek back. I'm going to peek. I'm going to look and see, okay, oh, he's still on spot for a time. Could he have done that? Possibly. But I think that's Josh Allen. All you do is throw the ball to the corner out. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so there's no there's no pre-snap adjustment to that? Like when they see? It's zero. So there's no no no. No, you can change. He can change the play. Okay, I got you. The quarterback can change the play, and that there there was no play change, so the play has to stay the same. You know right away that a corner route is a good route. It don't have to be a ten yard corner route. It has to be a corner route. It's zero coverage. The guy's going to be off six seven yards inside of you. So all I have to do is run at him and stick and go to the back of the pod line. All the quarterback do, has to do is drift back and throw it up. Mm. And the corner route was open too. Exactly. The one open. that he was going with was open. Yeah. You get what I mean? So, 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 so definitely it's, it's the quarterback got to stop getting all this immunity, man. He, he got it. He, <laughs> he, he look, he's not the exception all the time. Okay. The quarterback was wrong. Yeah. Okay. It was him. Nah. <laughs> Good for us. Shoot. Exactly. All right. All right, you guys, make sure that you check out Greg Cosell and Clay Harbor's show Inside the Tape. It airs every Thursday. Again, Greg Cosell, Clay Harbor, our very own teammate. And Greg Cosell does the pregame with me and Adam and Jeff. And uh, great tape breakdown guru, Clay Harbor, the muscles, the bachelor and also a great mind when it comes to football analysis check out inside the tape with Greg Cosell and Clay Harper hey it's Jeff Mosher I love the fall because football's back but it's also my busiest season between work kids going back to school youth sports and activities there's just not enough time especially to make a good home-cooked meal that's why I love HelloFresh They deliver farm fresh food with pre-proportioned ingredients and seasonal recipes right to my doorstep. No more wasting time at the grocery store because America's number one meal kit helps make home cooking easy, efficient, and affordable. We don't waste time researching new recipes and planning meals. With HelloFresh, the shopping's already done. The perfect amount of ingredients arrive with step-by-step recipe cards. How efficient is that? Plus, HelloFresh saves you time and money. HelloFresh is 25% less expensive than takeout, so you'll get a home-cooked meal without digging deep into your wallet. Don't forget about taste and selection. HelloFresh makes food for meat lovers, seafood lovers, vegetarians, and those who love variety. My personal favorites are the spicy Creole stew and pecan-crusted trout, two dinners my whole family enjoyed, and we actually had time to sit down together and eat at the table. Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50Eagles and use the code 50Eagles for 50% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash 50Eagles. Use that code 50Eagles for 50% off plus free shipping. Act now for America's number one meal kit. All right. So let's talk about let's talk about the uh the the TD pass to uh Alameda Zacchaeus off the scramble drill. Um 
first of all, I'm gonna have, I want to have your your viewpoint on it, and then I'll talk about it from a defensive defensive uh, perspective. Can you explain the scramble, how the scramble drill is ex- executed, and then like do you practice it? Do you guys practice it? Like, yeah. what happens in the real game? Like, what exactly goes on from an offensive perspective when you when you're talking about scramble? Yeah, drill? so a scramble drill basically is like this: if the quarterback is under the rest and or he's moving, and the play is over. So once the quarterback starts to move out of the pocket, your route timing is done. And there are certain rules that happen. If you're a guy that's way down the field on the backside, you start to try to get into the quarterback's vision. So you start to run across the field. If you're the guy that's deep, you come short. If you're the guy that's intermediate, you kind of go long. And then you're trying to stay in phase with the quarterback and you never move, right? And if you're a guy that's on the sideline, you strike it back inside and come back out towards the sideline. There's certain like little rules that you try to do, but basically you're trying to get in the quarterback's vision. The guy is long, come short. The guy is short, go long. That type of thing, right? And 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 mirroring and all those things. Lamade Zakia saw that he had no other outlet. And as soon as he saw that he had no other outlet, he took it up toward the post. Jalen had already signaled to Alameda Zacchaeus what to do because he gave him that little point. And he threw the ball up early enough where Alameda Zacchaeus wasn't open yet, but put it in the spot. And it was an excellent chance to take by Jalen Hurts because of the ball placement. He threw it on time when it comes to being in scramble mode, right? He threw it right when, when Lamine Zacchaeus was making his move, making his move. He didn't wait till he was at his move. He threw it right when he took a step up the field. He threw it where it was supposed to be. Great throw by Jalen Hurts and even a tougher play and catch by Lamine Zacchaeus in the rain, pouring at that moment to come down with that catch, the pride of St. Joe's prep, and Philadelphia's own Lamade Zacchaeus stepping up in critical moments. Boop, 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 boop. Let's go, Lamade. <laughs> Show up, baby. Every time you're in a game, by the way, I know this, son. Mm-hmm. Every time you're in the game, there's a play being made. Yep. Every time you're in the game, the play being made. Coach, stop <laughs> sleeping on Lamade. <laughs> stop sleeping on him. Yeah. What do you think? It was a great play, man. Um, you know the the scramble. The so the, the 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 breakdown. What was the breakdown defensively? I mean, he just got he got dunked on. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know, defense. That's one of the hardest. So when when a quarterback is in a scramble drill, it's one of the most difficult things to do as a defender because you're used to seeing traditional routes. You're used to diagnosing traditional routes, and just as you you broke it down. A guy could be deep and he's just sprinting up the field. So there's like, you know, a guy could be shallow and he's sprinting up the opposite way. He's going this, he's going left, he's going right. So there's there's no rhyme or reason to any routes that you're mm-hmm. seeing, right? It's just a situation where you just got to, we call it, we used to call it paste or, or stick. You basically lock on to the nearest offensive player. And even if you have to, you know, quote unquote, face guard them and get in between them and the quarterback, that's what you do. In that situation, if it was me, if I was the defenders in that, I honestly, once the quarterback's out, once the quarterback's out of the pocket and the ball's not in the air, you can push that receiver out of bounds. And now he cannot be the first person to touch the ball. So if I'm in that situation with with Zacchaeus behind me and I see Jalen kind of escape in the pocket. I'm going to push him out. I'm going to push the keys out of the back of the end zone. Now I don't have to defend him. I don't have to worry about him no more. He can't touch the ball. And so that's really in that situation, the back of the end zone, that's, that's really the only thing you can do. If you, you know, if, if you want to make sure that you don't have to cover this guy for, you know, five, six, 20 yards or, you know, eight seconds. So, you know, that's really, you know, that's, probably the only thing that you can do in that situation is try to push him out of bounds or, you know, you get into that jump ball situation and I, I don't have hops. I don't have hops like that. The kids would have dunked on me like three times <laughs> in the back of the end zone. So it probably would have been the same situation if I was back there. So I would have just pushed his butt out of bounds and I ain't got to worry about it. <laughs> yeah. That, that, and that's a great point because, you know, that's the extra defender for you guys back there rather than trying to stop him from, we're then trying to stop him from catching. What about just catch him and throw him out of bounds? Yeah. Oh, you could do that too. Yeah. 
Yeah, just you get what I mean? Just that type of thing. Yeah, just hold him up and make sure that his feet don't touch the ground. Yeah. Right. There's different ways that you can try to stop it, but the timing of the throw would have just made it hard. Yeah. Jalen had great timing for that throw. Micah Hyde is a good ball safety. He he catches a lot of interceptions. He's a punt returner. He has a knack for the football. Um, kick return all been his whole career. So he has a, a way of finding the football. And he couldn't get there because the timing of the play. And that's just the bottom line. Jalen Hurts put that ball up before Lama Day kind of made a move because he gave him the signal. I don't know, eye contact. I don't know what it was. He gave him that when you walk down the street and you see a dude, you'd be like, what's up, bro? That, 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 and you don't really say nothing, but you, you know, you hit him on the limb. Yeah. Like, yeah, that was the same thing that Jalen Hurts did. Jalen hit him with one of those and he, <laughs> Bam! Touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> That's like when uh when what Martin Martin said when you get on the plane, you look around, you see, and you you see someone that you know. You like, hey, what's up? Someone you don't know, but hey, you, you get yourself that nod right there. Like, hey, something go down on this plane. Me and you, yeah. we got we got to take care of. It. Yeah, that's so. funny. <laughs> <laughs> we got we we together. That's funny. All right. Oh, let's see where we're Josh Allen. Josh Allen gave, gave the Eagles fits all game. Could the Eagles have done something differently, or is it just Josh Allen's specialty? And were the Eagles too passive on the fourth quarter drive that ended in Allen's touchdown to Gabe Davis for the lead in under two minutes? So um, was was it something that we were doing, or was just Allen just special? I mean, I just I think that that Allen just he had a really good game. Um, he's he's tough, man. He's strong. He's big. He's athletic. Um, you know, he gets out of the pocket. He makes plays with his feet. And when he's on, he's on, man. When he's on, he plays well. And like I said before, you know, he tends to to make big mistakes at, at critical times, and that's really the only rap on him. So he's a, you know, he's a bona fide, uh, you know, top top tier level quarterback in this league. So. Um, you know, I I think I think he just was on his game, right? And so do I think it's tough it's tough because we had a bunch of injuries on that, you know, we we're talking about that last drive. There was a bunch of injuries. Um you had the D line was was fighting, fighting their lives off. They were tired, man. They were exhausted. It's you could the see the whole defense was tired. They <laughs> played the done. whole first half. Yeah, man. And so you know, in that situation, I think I think the size game plan was, hey, we're just gonna, you know, play smart, be smart here, and hopefully he does make one of those bonehead plays. Hopefully he does make one of those mistakes and gives the ball to us. So I can understand why he did that when you got injuries and you got new guys in there and you got guys that are tired. You know, you you have to do what you have to do to get through the drive. Um, you know, the real breakdown to me is again, we just on on the perimeter. With our with our cornerback play, we're just a little bit too soft, and um, you know communication is, is a huge factor, and uh, you know it's it's something that I feel like we highlight every week, and it just seems to keep being the same issue. So I don't know. No, you you notice how in the first half of that game we didn't have open receivers. Now, why is that? Sean McDermott, you played for him here in Eagles. You also played for him in Carolina. They have a – because he's a zone defensive coordinator, coverage when it comes to coverage, the guys are used to playing those coverages. They know where they're weak, and they have their freedom to do certain things. It's harder for – our team to get open on their zone than it is for their team to get open on our zone. Our zone is just like the, the, the doctor order It's prescription. It's what you see It's very vanilla. It's, it's what you see on the tape, what you see on, on the paper when they drawing up in a game plan, you yep. drop back in this spot. There's no creativity to it. There is no nuance to it. It's just, um cold it's a cold zone defense it's like like you draw it up every day yeah it doesn't have the personality to know okay this guy is doing this let me carry him into the next zone 
and let me, um, you know, have a little nuance in my play. And that's what you see from the Bills. That's what you see from the Jets. That whole division, when they play zone, it almost looks like man because they're carrying guys to the next zone. They're, pick, they're locating the guy in their zone. They're staying with him until you deliver him to the next zone defender. And I don't think we do a good job of that in general. If we're going to be a zone team, we have to play zones the proper way and not just zone drop blindly and think guys are not going to find an open. It's, these are NFL quarterbacks and receivers that know windows and know where holes is. And it's something that Deshaun Desai has to sure up before it's too late because we can't continue to be last in the league when it comes to yards, when it comes to passing touchdowns, when it comes to most stats, um, third down percentages, like we're bad at a lot of these things. We can't get off the field. How many times do we have Josh Allen dead to rights and we couldn't get him, right? So I think that we have to do something different. Josh Allen is a very special player. I won't take that away from him. Hard to tackle, but the truth is, is that we need much better secondary play, much better secondary play. Agree. Yeah. And that includes the linebackers. I mean, it's... yes, second, secondary, and second level play, second and third, second and third level play. We need that. Yep. How about that? Yep, I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. All right, where we at? Oh, uh, what changed yeah. in the second half yeah. after the Eagles? Yeah. So what changed in the second half after the Eagles were dysfunctional on offense for the first thirty minutes? Um, what changed in the second half? I think Tony Romo did a good job of describing it. They didn't start going outside zone. They hit that one to Swift. Um, another thing too, some of the dividends of the first half begin to pay off. So remember, we always, or the city of Philadelphia always needs a scapegoat. And this is not just Philadelphia. It's most fans everywhere. When something isn't going right, somebody has to pay, right? So I see a lot on during the game at halftime. Um, I'm seeing, you know, blogs, Eagles, you know, blogs and things saying fire Brian Johnson because they can't move. But he's it's not everything's not always going to work right at the, in the first half. But he was setting up things. We saw receiver screens. We saw the inside zone. We saw um, some variations of quarterback movement. We saw a lot of things like that. And what happened was is, is that those receiver screens they were doing early in the game, they ended up panning out. Mm -hmm. running the ball inside ended up getting AJ Brown a free touchdown De uh, DeAndre uh, Swift was able to bust a couple because they kept going inside and they were pinching so they would go outside all those things were haymakers that were set up by jabs in the first half so that's what Brian Johnson was doing I think Jalen Hurts began to use his legs a little bit more another thing too they were going to realize that Devontae Smith can catch the ball in a hurricane. It don't matter if it's raining, <laughs> no matter if it's sleeting or snowing, whatever it is, the only receiver out there the entire game catching the ball with his hands, not just with his body. He caught the ball with his body sometime you need to. But that one for a touchdown, hands catch, yep. user catch, you know, so that's how it was. And, and I think that Jalen Hurts played magnificently. The line did a good job blocking. But mostly, I thought the dividends of the first half just paid off for Brian Johnson. I think I, I agree. I think I think Johnson, Brian Johnson called a great game. And the only thing I did not like was opening game. You got Jack Driscoll starting, you know, lanes down, open the game with three straight passes. And, you know, you got Malcolm Floyd or um, – yeah, Leonard Floyd. Uh, Leonard Floyd, um, you know, lined up over Driscoll. So I, I think that that first drive, the, the the three pass plays in a row, was probably not the best idea. But other than that, I thought he did a phenomenal job. Yeah, that was obnoxious for sure. And it was a three and out fast, and they haven't got the news, <laughs> right? So and yeah, so you have to know KYP, know your personnel. Don't think that okay, we're just gonna test them out and see. You no, know, why are you throwing the ball that much anyway? And it's raining. So I think that sometimes we gotta we gotta figure out what we can do at the beginning of the games and what we can't do, um, you know. So that's yeah. my just thought. Great yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Make sure you guys come out to Launch Trampoline Park in Deford, New Jersey. Again, Launch Trampoline Park in Deford, New Jersey. Rock climbing, laser tag, uh, Ninja Warrior course, cafe, birthday parties, corporate events all types of things, rock climbing,
come out to Launch Trampoline Park and I'll make sure that I hit you in the face with the dice ball <laughs> right from these hands here that caught all those touchdowns. Dodge ball, bam, right in the face. Launch Trampoline Park, Deaf New Jersey. <laughs> hey, it's Jeff Mosher. Here's some advice for you. Picture this, not just watching games, but turning every second into a potential win. With my bookie, you can stream the games and live bet them and turn any game day into a payday. Ready to up your game? Sign up today and make your first deposit with promo code GUN, G-U-N-N, for a sweet deposit bonus up to $1,000. That's promo code GUN, G-U-N-N, to claim your bonus. This isn't just a promo code. It's your secret weapon to get the extra edge on the house. The best part is you don't need to be a sports whiz to win at my bookie. You can cash in on everything from politics to your favorite shows and then some. Bet anything, anytime, and anywhere only with my bookie. All right, looking ahead. All right, so we've got a big game this week coming up. The dreaded 49ers next. Um, Eagles are actually underdogs at home, which is kind of weird. No Zach. Cunningham, no, um, possibly no Zach Cunningham, possibly no Fletcher Cox. Um, is the Eagles defense in trouble? This will be a very tough game for the Birds because the 49ers and the Eagles, I think, I think the 49ers are a more, more complete team than the Eagles. That mean that they're going to win the game. I don't think that they're the better overall team as this as the as the season ends right now they're playing better football the last three games than the eagles have yes their competition is not as good as the eagles but when it comes to domination playing offense and defense making it tough on people uh i think that they're doing they're complementing each other really well the eagles has been the offense has to overcome the defense pretty much lately. If the defensive line doesn't get pressure, we're going to give up a bunch of yards in the secondary, right? So I think that the Eagles um, are in for in for a very tough game. However, here's the catching point. The two games that we play probably the best in defensively, right? Besides the Chiefs game, I think that was credited to the rain, is the Dolphins. Mm-hmm. The Rams second half. Yeah, what what does that happen? What what that why why did I mention those teams? Because of Kyle Shanahan, Sean McVay, Mike McDaniel's, that Washington coaching staff, that Falcons coaching staff, that historic San Francisco type of offense. Sean Desai knows that like the back of his hand because he came from Seattle. So I believe that this move by picking him up was to counteract the the resurgence or the surging um, 49ers. So I I think that we'll be in good shape because of the familiarity with the team that Sean Desai has. But um, it will be an uphill battle. It'll be tough. It's going to be a tough game. I think the Eagles um, will win at home, but I think it'll be the toughest game they had all year. I definitely believe so. Yeah, I agree. And I think to add to that, to your point, this team, this this Niners team, and, and traditionally um, that whole uh, coaching tree, that offense is not really designed to play from behind. So I think the Eagles need to come out and they need to get a lead. They need to get, you know, up 10 points, um, you know, 14 points, score early, fast, and often – and then get these guys, get the Niners team kind of off of their their normal their normal offense because once they start rolling and got the they got the lead, you know everything looks the same. Run looks the same as pass, and so it really puts a lot of pressure on the defense. So you know if if they can come out get an early lead, force them to play from behind, I think that this this team I think will be victorious. That's a great point that you make because this team it, you want to see this team 
not be able to do play action where play action doesn't mean anything because it's down. And now Brock Purdy has to pick apart a defense rather than have open plays through from play action because McCaffrey's been hurting us running the ball and the tight end is in the same position. Now he's running the route from that same position, right? So when you consider all of those things and they're a play action heavy team, Everything that they do is based off play actions and cut splits. That's their thing when they pass the ball is play action, cut splits, run the football. And uh, so we have to figure that out. And, yes, playing from in front is usually better because you kind of make them impatient. They have to play a game that they don't want to play. Yep. Yeah. And here's a quick question for you. Do you think we need Shaq Leonard, right? We had Christian Ellis come in the game. Uh, we – um, knew that that Zach Cunningham could be out for a little bit with a hamstring. Uh, do you how badly you think we need Shaq Leonard or Darius? Uh, very badly. Our our linebacking core is you know it's pretty banged up. Um, you know Shaq Leonard. I honestly don't. I know he was he's coming off an injury, and I yeah, think he's coming off part back. of the reason mm -hmm. is the back. Yeah, so I believe that's part of the reason why he was released. Um, but, you know, even as a, a veteran presence, someone that can give you, you know, 10, 15 games, I mean, 10, 15 plays, um, you know, certain situations, passing downs, where he can just get in there and, and use his his knowledge of the game to just kind of drop into those those zones and get everybody lined up. I mean, I, I think that he can only help. Like right now, we're just so depleted at the linebacker position. And the guys that are playing, like Ellis, I thought he did okay coming in, but you know he's he's still got a lot of work to do. And and really this this whole linebacking core across the board, I mean they play well at times, but it's not consistent enough. So you know you can only you can only you know add benefit to that room by bringing in a veteran presence. So I'm all for it, man. And, and if he can run, if he's healthy enough to at least give us you know 10, 15 plays, I'm good there. You're talking about a guy that was always at the top of the league when it comes to tackle and making turnovers and doing things like that. I think you got to give him a chance to – to you need him, one, because we don't have N'Kobe Dean. We don't have Zach Cunningham. We only have Morrow and Christian Ellis, right? So we need a guy, and then you just hope that he can return to his former self. And if he can inform, return to a Pro Bowl-type player – that can be helpful. He can't cover any worse in, 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 than our guys have, right? I don't know yeah. how that would be even possible from the <laughs> linebacker position. Yeah, really. yeah, exactly. So I think it can only be beneficial. Now it's all about him wanting a certain amount of money and, um, and hopefully how we can make this come through because we definitely need him now. I agree. Yeah. I would get it done. Let's go, Howie. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you guys, we want to say thank you for tuning in to the Q&A podcast. We always have a great time doing this show. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you check out Inside the Tape with our man Greg Cosell and Clay Harbor. Also check out our pregame show every Sunday with me, Adam, Jeff, and Greg. Um, we enjoy this platform this time. So thank you to everybody at Inside the Birds. Remember, email your questions to insidethebirds at gmail.com. I'm Jason Avant. Thank you, guys. The Eagles are 10 and 1 heading into the 49ers week. We want the Eagles to smash the 49ers for talking. It'll be a tough game, but if the Eagles come out and make a statement right there, they will put the league on notice. And I know that's what they want to do. So I don't necessarily think the game will go like that. Um, I think it'll be a tough, hard fought game. I think the Eagles will win. Q, you got the last word. Hey, man, as always, it's been a pleasure, man. I enjoy it. Um, one last thing I wanted to say, I hope everybody had a happy Thanksgiving. Um, one of the most beautiful things I saw over the weekend was right before the the uh, Red, the Redskins, the Commanders and Cowboys game. You got to see Jackie Taylor, the, uh, the daughter of the late, great Sean Taylor, um, you know, honoring her father and talking about his legacy. It was a beautiful, beautiful thing. And I can't believe how much time has already passed. And, you know, so it was a beautiful thing. It was great to see that she's growing up and she's in college now and she's doing great stuff. So cool stuff. Yeah, but that's all I got, man. See you guys yeah, next week. Well, I got go blue. Go blue. <laughs> You've been talking that stuff about sign stealing. <laughs> I heard it. 
all over the world. <laughs> Sign still these nights. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs>